Okay, everyone, welcome to another video for Great Lakes weather. We are talking about several different things today. The weather is going to be changing. We actually have some snow in the forecast, so we're going to talk about that just a little bit. And then tonight, particularly tonight, we have the northern light potential that could take place, especially the farther north in Michigan you go, the farther northwest in particular, because we have some cloud cover that may potentially impact the ability for us to see the northern lights in the region. So, before we get into that, remember, you can scan that QR code to get connected with us. Um, the Remind stuff is not updated. It's updated on the website, so you can check there, but we're available on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, Telegram, and you can shoot an email if you'd like as well. Um, QR code right there. Scan that if you're watching on desktop with your phone. All right, we are going to get right into it. Let me pull up this here. All right, so this is the current updated aurora forecast from the Space Weather Prediction Center from the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. So if we go through, this is the current time right here, 3.36 p.m. And if we continue through, if I slide it through, you can kind of tell it kind of dies out a little bit. And by the time we get to about 2, 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock, something like that, you can really see that things just really start to light up. And especially if you go a little bit just north of the Michigan area, you can kind of see it on the screen. Michigan, especially the Upper Peninsula, will have a very good chance of seeing the northern lights as long as there is no cloud cover. So we're going to look at cloud cover in just a minute, but it's going to be very bright tonight. A very strong coronal mass ejection came off the sun and is going to cause these northern lights overnight tonight. So there's a you can see how bright it gets. It's going to be pretty impressive. So that's a look at that. Let's take a look at the potential that we have to see it in those regions because of the cloud cover. Cloud cover might hinder that. This is the current time as well. This is a 3 p.m. model run for cloud cover from the GFS. So Indiana, Ohio, southern Michigan is still dealing with the cloud cover. But let's go to a forecast loop real quick and get a better idea. All right, so let's go back to our time. So this is this is current time right here. All right, so the cloud cover is there. You can tell. Let's so as we progress, four o'clock. Kind of tell when we get into about one one a.m. 1 a.m. right here. This is 2 a.m. I want 1 a.m. I can. All right. This is 1 a.m. right here. You can see the cloud cover is really starting to break off. Western Michigan, Northwest Michigan, even parts of Northwest Northern Indiana might have a shot of seeing Northern Lights, but you really should get out into an open area in order to see them. You won't just see them right right above you in the sky. You're gonna have to look pretty pretty far to the north in order to see them, especially if you're down there. Places in the Upper Peninsula. Could see northern lights quite fairly well compared to areas down in the south. Ohio, you're definitely going to miss out um, on the northern lights today, which is kind of unfortunate. So let's progress the frame a little bit. Again, this is at about 4 a.m. Clouds pretty much clear out across Michigan, parts of Indiana. Your best shot of seeing the northern lights is between 2 a.m. and 4 a.m. for any of these regions. So getting up, getting up early will be the best shot. Maybe even 5 a.m. and 6 a.m. I I know the um the, the it gets darker uh, a lot later overnight now, so you may have a shot seeing it at 5 a.m. or 6 a.m. Then the cloud cover will return to parts of Lower Michigan later on in the day, but during daytime you can't even see northern lights, so it doesn't really make a difference. But as this low pressure system moves out, which is having quite an interesting impact on the temperatures across our area, and it's going to continue to have an impact for quite a while. As it, low, as it moves out, it'll be replaced by some cloud cover off to the north. Um, and then we have another system to pay attention to that is off to the west. This one's not going to be as strong, but it will have an influence on our weather and may even bring our shot at the first snow of the season if it arrives at a particular time overnight. Low temperatures next week are going to drop around freezing. Going to drop around freezing. Here's the height anomaly map. Let's close out that tab so I don't interfere with it. Let's go to a forecast loop. So let's go to current time. 
So this is close to current time right here. So you have this... Oops. Sometimes technology likes to play with you. Okay. So this is what it looks like right now. You can see this really deep and cold upper level trough. Basically what this is model is showing you right now is the temperature of the air in the upper levels of the atmosphere. In the upper levels of the atmosphere here, it's a lot colder than normal. So that pink shade that you see there is, indicates colder than normal temperatures in the upper levels. And cold air likes to sink. So that sinking cold air is what's going to cause much cooler temperatures across this region throughout the week. And we're also included in that, especially in southern Michigan. So temperatures in the low 40s are on the way next week. So as we progress this, you can see that trough kind of weakens. But the ridge that would have brought us some warm air also will fall apart as well. And another trough is going to enter in that's going to deepen right over our area. That's what could bring us the potential for some snow come next week. At particularly some lake effect snow possible. Not going to see a lot, but it's very difficult to predict with this setup. Because you're right in between a ridge and a trough on the northern side. Right in between where the ridge and the trough meet, you're likely to see more low pressure systems develop. So there's going to be a low pressure system that moves right across this area. And on the back side of that, I think it's going to be a weak low pressure system, but on the back side of that is where the lake effect snow could occur if it gets cold enough at night, which it's going to get down in the 20s and some, and some nights next week. So it's going to be something to be aware of. Progressing eastward or onward, that trough sticks around for quite a while. Um, we're into Wednesday now. Tuesday night is when there's the potential for some snow. Not much, though. Trough just doesn't seem to dissipate. Then we have a nice large ridge that builds in. And it's kind of a weirdly set up ridge, but you can see it gets nice and... It get, you get some warmer temperatures in the upper levels of the atmosphere, so that'll help with keeping things warm in our region. It'll, it'll warm back up into the upper 40s, low 50s, place, areas like that next weekend with some potential for some rain. We'll look at the radar in just a second. And then there's another trough that will cool our temperatures down again. What I really am curious about is the long-range model, if it holds together. Look at this deep trough where it ends. This thing could continue into our region, and it's likely that with how deep this trough is, there could be a blizzard on the back side of this. So that'll might, that could potentially bring us some snow later on in mid-November. November 15th, this model runs from November 15th. Again, this model is a long range, so it's likely that this right here could potentially change. And with this ridge you have built up right next to a trough, you could get some stronger storms on the west side of this. This could be our major front before we see winter finally begin to set in to our area. So that's something to keep an eye on. Let's actually take a look at the radar to get an idea of what might happen in terms of the weather. So progressing. This is Sunday. You get that trough. You can see the trough, those blue lines. The 540 line is what we want to pay very close attention to right here. This is where this trough is that I was showing you, where the cooler air is in the upper upper levels of the atmosphere, that 540 line is going to play a role in how much snow we get. Upper Peninsula, very likely to see some snow. Indiana and Ohio probably will only see rain. It's going to be very difficult to see if we could get some snow as far south as northern Indiana and northern Ohio. But definitely lake effect snow in the Upper Peninsula. You're going to see a bit of snow. There's where we see potential for lake effect um, Tuesday afternoon into Tuesday evening. Nice northern high pressure, keeping things nice and cool. All right, high pressure continues to stick around for quite a while, so it's going to be relatively quiet, but we'll still see some lake effect snow as a result of the trough that hits our region. Then here comes the low pressure system. Looks like that'll feed some snow and rain into our area. Well, quite a bit of rain, it looks like. This will be a cold a cold rain. Temperatures maybe in the upper 40s, so pretty cold. So this is Monday of next week.
Monday of next week, and then we're, we're now we're into Wednesday. Now, what's really concerning is these next two storms that I see pop up. This is Thursday, November 11th, all right? November 11th, you see an, a little bit of a first round of clipper, like, clipper-like snow associated with a warm front, which is very strange. Uh, it's not necessarily strange, but it's not... But it's kind of interesting that the model's putting that out. I don't think we'll see rain, any snow from a warm front. I think it'll come mainly as rain. But behind that, the warm front lifts northward. Oops, I gotta go back. I gotta figure out how to fix that. The warm front lifts northward. And then you see on the back side of this, you have heavy showers, thunderstorms, along with, very, with a very strong low pressure system. Look at that, 90, 984 millibars. That's pretty, that's pretty low pressure. So on the east side of this, you're going to have your warm air being sucked in to the low pressure. And on the back side, you have your cold air. And that's why you see snow, the freezing rain, particularly in parts of Minnesota, northern Minnesota. looks like you're going to get some pretty heavy snow. On the back side of this, the snow is just going to take off. See these thunderstorms developing along this very powerful cold front where this trough, remember, when I showed you the height anomaly, this trough... It's going to be right next to this ridge that's built up in the eastern or in the parts of the Great Lakes region. So this front's going to progress through. Not sure how in the, at the intensity of the storms yet. And then looks like the storms will intensify again down in parts of the Dixie Alley region. Progressing more, you have another round of heavy snow on the backside with more thunderstorms on the east side. And just a really well-defined line of storms. Again, these, this is the long-range model, so we're not sure about its accuracy a bit. But if this model holds together, we can have a pretty significant storm event on November 11th and November 15th. So that's going to be the next thing to keep an eye on as the weather continues. Okay? So I already did. I already showed you that. I already showed you the height anomalies. So let's take a look at temperatures. How temperatures are going to change throughout the next little bit of time. All right, so this is temperatures for, these are the current temperatures today, 51 degrees here in my at my house in Michigan. Um, areas similar are gonna have temperatures in the 50s. Let's progress it. Overnight, you get down into the 40s and then starts to get colder Monday. Monday night, this is Monday night right here, you have Freezing temperatures, temperatures getting down closer to freezing in Michigan. And that's just going to be the trend as that trough continues to move through. Just getting progressively colder. So you see those freezing temperatures in the 30s, Wednesday. I don't think the snow that we're expecting Tuesday night will stick, given the fact that the temperatures are going to be in the 30s. The ground is not going to be cool enough in order to support snow sticking to the ground. So we may see some snowfall, but accumulations are not likely. All right, so it continues to get progressively colder. I think snow will stick in areas in the Upper Peninsula because um, you're going to have temperatures in the teens and the 20s those evenings. That'll be good enough for snow to stick. And then look at that along the New England area. You could see some pretty cold temperatures along there. They're going to get cold quite a bit. And you have that ridge building in. So it's going to start to get warmer. As we get into November 11th, you see that nice, well-defined warm ridge of warm air. As that cold front progresses, you see the batch of cold air off in Canada. That's following that strong ridge on the backside that trough on the backside. The ridge hits our region. We're going to get up into the 60s around the 14th, according to the latest models. Then that strong cold front. Look how quickly the temperatures change along this cold front. That's going to make it a strong storm. So on the backside, you have 20s, single digits, negatives even in some parts of Colorado, the Rockies, Rocky Mountain regions. But this is as far as the model goes out. Again, this model for the 15th and the 11th may change. But it's going to be something to keep an eye on as we continue forward. All right. So that pretty much covers everything I wanted to show you in this video. Um, again, northern lights possible tonight. Make sure 2 a.m., 4 a.m. is the best time to be able to see those northern lights. And then we have cooler temperatures coming throughout this week. 
later on next week, we have the potential to see some more storms that could bring some thunderstorms, maybe some heavy rain, if the models tend to hold together. And then ahead of November 15th, I think we're going to see much cooler temperatures as that trough that's bringing the cool, cold air pushes into Michigan. So that's going to be the next big weather change that we're going to have to keep an eye on for the Great Lakes region. All right. Hopefully this video is helpful to you. Hopefully it was informative. Make sure to like if you liked and leave a comment if you have any questions. So have a great afternoon and enjoy those northern lights this evening. All right.